Okay, so we've written out text files, and now we need to get into reading them and writing them back out again. So I'm down in section five from the old Python website, and this is really common. Um, probably every month on average, I get someone bringing me a text file, and it's in the wrong format, and it's got tons of data in it, and they need to have it reformatted in some way. Um, last summer, 2020, uh, we had over 300 files on salmon just on the Trinity River, and we had to AQC it, extract data out of them, and put them into a database. Um, it was a massive data processing project that I'll talk a little bit more about later in the semester. Some examples of the types of reformatting we need to do is that humans like dates like 215, 2015, but the computer format is year, month, day. Uh, this is actually the one we use in the U.S. is month, day, year, but in Europe they use day, month, year. So that's one of the reasons we have international standards like this one, so that we're all working with the same format. Then, of course, computers like decimal degrees, but humans still sometimes want degrees, minutes, and seconds, not as often as they used to. Uh, and changing units is extremely common, so uh, we still use the English system here in the U.S., even though the English have long ago abandoned it. So we're regularly converting into metric or ISO units, um, you know, centigrade, Fahrenheit, inches to meters, etc. Another one I do commonly is scientific names to common names, and there's databases out there where you can get scientific names, and we tend to keep the scientific name in a database or in our original code, but then we convert it to common names and sometimes to codes, like CNRS has codes for species. Uh, that folks use in the field a lot to make it easier to write names down um, when they're doing surveys. Um, anyway, uh, here's a small file that um, just has a little bit of data from earthquakes. Okay, and you can already see here's that international standard. It looks a little bit strange when you first look at it, but you can see there's the year, month, and day. There's the hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, and then the T separates the date from the time, and the Z just ends it. So, um, obviously this is not something you would want to show to the general public as a date timestamp, because yuck, same thing here with decimal, longitude, and latitude, uh, depth is less of a problem. But, all right, moving on. So, first thing we need to do is learn how to read a text file. Um, there's a lot of different types of text files. The ones we work with the most common are definitely um, CSV files. Uh, ones like TIFF and Imagine, we need special readers because they're not text files. They're called binary files, so they have binary data. Um, can't read them as text. But ASCII and ASCII Grid, as you're already aware, those are ones we can read and write um, using Python. Uh, we can read and write TIFFs and, and images, but we need special libraries like the one SpaPy that we created. Um, you can also open these in Word, Notepad, etc. Uh, they include PRJ files for the Esri spatial reference. It's not really a projection. It's the whole spatial reference. XML data for metadata, KML for KMEarth, um, etc., etc. TXT is pretty common to use for text files. Uh, lots of them. So, um, file paths. We've talked a lot about file paths, so I'm just going to skip over this. Uh, one thing to note is we do have more folks working on Macs than I used to, and so that's another one is remember the Mac system doesn't use the C colon or D colon to identify a drive. It's different, so your file paths will look a little different there. It, relative paths work better and can usually go back and forth. Okay, so let's read a text file. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this code into Wings we've been doing for a while. And of course, first thing I need to do is fix my file path. Now, I tend to like to break these out as a variable, put them at the top of my file. That way it's easier for me to work with. And I'm gonna take my little CSV file here, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that to my desktop, to my 318 folder. I think we're now on lab seven. Hello? I have a folder, please. Thank you. Seven. Okay, and Windows tends to put this parentheses one when you download things multiple times. I like to get rid of those. So there's our. Huh. Well, that's 
that's interesting. Maybe I will put a number after it. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah. Excel. Complaining. Does that a lot. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to save this file into that same folder on my desktop. 318. Lab 7. Read file. Okay, now because I did that, I don't actually need to do the entire file path. Right? I can just go ahead and put in the local path. Now, um, as I mentioned before, one of the things I do is, is I've been programming for a long time, but I do a little bit of code and then I stop and I do a little bit more code and then I stop um, and I go little by little. All right? So let's see what the next step is. Um, oh, so this goes ahead and reads the entire file in one shot, right? So one line reads the entire file. Um, sounds easy, and it is, but it's really not the most convenient way to read a file because typically when we're reading text files, we want to read them a line at a time. So here's the code to go ahead and read a file line at a time. Let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to leave my file path up there just to make life easier. Oh, and notice that what we've done is we've opened the file, but we've opened it with read access instead of write. It needs to be a small r. And then I'm going to set up a counter to count the number of lines. I'm going to read the first line. Now, the first line is typically a header. Okay, so sometimes we have to handle it differently. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Then I'm going into a loop. And I'm saying while the line is not equal to an empty string and the number of lines is less than 100, stay inside the loop. Um, typically, the last line is an empty string. Now, not always, right? Sometimes you'll have empty um, strings in the middle of the file, so we have to use other ways of checking that we're at the end. Um, and num lines is less than 100. This is in there in case I forget my counter or I've got a really huge file with thousands of lines in it. Um, that way I can write my code quickly. Uh, we print the line, and then we go ahead and get the next line so that as we loop, which I'll show you in a second, it will terminate after we read the last line. So here we go. So there's our first line and see how that's a header. Okay. So we're going to print that, although we want to handle it differently from a processing standpoint. Then we go ahead and we read the next line. There's our first data line. It's not empty. Num lines is not over hundred. So we're just going to get that line. Then we're going to get the next line. Okay. I think we have three lines in here. Yep. All right. And then this one is now an empty string. So we go back, it's going to go and exit, it's going to close, and it's going to tell us how many lines are read from the file. Okay? All right, now the next step is we want to be able to get into our file and we want to be able to break up these lines, right? You can see that these lines are delimited by commas. It's a comma separated value file, so the commas are what separate it. Here, the date and the time are separated by a T and then the date separated by dashes. So we need a function that's going to split these up quickly and easily so we can get to the parts of them. Um, okay, so if we go back, splitting delimited strings. So delimited is that idea that the strings have characters in them that delimit them or break them up. And there's a split function in Python that does this great. So I'm just going to run this little example really quickly. Okay, so here we've got rock, sand, and shale, three different types of uh, geomorphic things, and we've got commas separating them. So if we go ahead and set a breakpoint, do a run. Do, 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 do. Okay. So if I go to stack data, there's our string. Now, when we do split, notice that it looks similar, but it's in brackets. That's because this is now an array. If we open the array, we can see there's rock, sand, and shale. So we can go and pull these different values out. If we print the whole thing, it will look like a string, except again, it's got the brackets to show it's an array. And the important part is then we can go in and we can grab one. So zero would be the first one. One is going to be the second one, zero, one, two. Cool? So very easy function to be able to split up strings based on delimiters. Now, something I need to mention is that there is a CSV library. This is, is new to the class last year, but um, 
it is handy to have, especially if you've got complicated text inside of your CSV files. In other words, if they've got apostrophes, quotes inside of quotes, things like that, um, I do recommend using the CSV library. And I use it pretty much all the time if I'm reading and writing CSV files now. Uh, the problem, of course, is, is it only works with certain types of files. Now, it is more general than just CSV. Even though it's a CSV library, it is more general than that. It'll work with other types of delimiters, but it's really built for CSV files. So we could take this and see how it works with our Volcano set of data. So we need to import the CSV library. and specify our path okay oops got an extra character in there and we go ahead and run and what you'll see wouldn't it be nice if it saved the last folder we were in that would be handy okay so it goes ahead and not sure what it just did. All right, let's single step through it. Okay, so we go ahead and set up our file path. We open the file, and then we need to get this reader. And I believe we did this before with the CSV writer. Okay, so this is a special object that's going to help us go through the file. And then we set a counter for the number of rows. Ha, that's why that guy got indented in. So it only happened, didn't happen on the first row. Sometimes when you copy and paste stuff from the web, you, tabs get screwed up. Just be ready for it. Okay, so now it's going to go through each one. In other words, it's going to read a row. So there's our first row. Notice it's in an array already, so it does a little bit of the work for us. Okay, we don't have to split up CSV. If this is greater than zero, in other words, we're going to skip the header line. Okay, then it'll go ahead and print. Ta -da! And here you can see we're just printing out the date. So this is a way that we could get the dates out. And then we could go ahead and use split here to break apart our dates uh, from the time and then break up the dates and break up the time, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? And that's part of the assignment. So um, next on the list is converting international dates. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now I'm doing this with the out the CSV um, writer. You can do it any way you want um, with the CSV or without. That's okay with me. Uh, I just need to make sure you're breaking up dates. Okay, we go ahead and run this and let's see what's happening. Breakpoint. Tend to run them, make sure it works. Okay. Here's our line. So notice that I read the header line, so we've got it. But then I immediately read another line because we don't really care about the header. We really want to get to the data, especially if we know it's in the file. So now I'm going to do a split on commas. So now we've got each of the different elements. There's our date time string, um, measured value. Oh, uh, I think it's a latitude and then a longitude. Um, oh, look, we look at the header and find out. Yeah, latitude, longitude, and depth. Um, somewhere near the equator. Okay, so now we can pull out the date time string. There's a date time string. So now we can work on it and split it up. And here we're just going to go ahead and get another line, split it out. So, and I do recommend again doing this step by step. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to get the date and the time string separated out from each other. So I'm going to put that right here, okay, because we've got the date time string. Now we want to split that and we want to split it based on the T. And then the first element should be the date and the next element should be the time. So let's try that. And this is how I develop. I add a little bit of code, use breakpoints to make sure things are working. Do we get the date string? Got the time string? Sweet. Okay, now I really don't have to go back to the web, right, because I can figure this out. Tend to copy and paste, take the date string. Now we've got the, the elements. Okay. And if I'm going to move my breakpoint down here, stop, go, 
step, we can see that hopefully uh, it did not work. Oh, because I broke up the date string, which has dashes in it, with a capital T, which does not make any sense. Okay, <laughs> let's try it again. Now we should be able to get the, to the date elements. There we go, year, month, and day. Now, now notice there are also strings. So to get the year, okay, we could just do that. Month, oh, sorry, forgot the zero part. And I'm gonna call this day of the month to keep it from getting confused with day of the year or day of the week all of which we would be using at different times. Okay, so there we go. Now that gives me the year, the month, and the day. However, day of the month, um, if we want to do these as integers, then we really need to go ahead and convert these to integers. In other words, if you're going to do any arithmetic with them, uh, date conversions, that kind of thing, you may have to convert it into an integer. Now we've got an integer for the year. We could do that with these other ones as well. All right. And so then you could just continue that on using colon to get to the different pieces of time. And we're good to go on splitting up dates. So the next step is to go ahead and put this into a function. In other words, um, we want to create a function that's going to give us a nice date. Okay, functions in Python are very easy to create. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this one over. Now, obviously, I need to add a bunch of inline comments and headers. Uh, provided a header for this one. Okay, here's our computer date. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my date time string, and instead of doing all this stuff in the main body of my code, which is going to get ugly, as I add more and more of it, it's going to get uglier and uglier or harder to work with. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and take all of this, I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to paste it into this function. Functions are defined by saying def, def, space, and then you've seen parentheses before to call a function. The difference here is instead of calling it, we're actually defining it, and then we define what is going to come into the function. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more on this later. But now what we can do is we can go ahead and call the function down here. And I'm going to put a breakpoint there. And we hit go. We go into here. Step, 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 step. Sweet. Everything still works. Okay? Until I do a go and nice date isn't defined yet. So I need to go ahead and define the nice date, and I'm just going to go ahead and make that equal to good old US format of month plus slash plus day of the month. Now these are both still strings, so the year I turned into an integer, so I need to format that. And obviously you're either going to want to keep them as strings or convert them all to integers, your choice. Okay, now when I go ahead and run that, we go into our function, breaks up our year, month, day, day of the month, and then we get our nice date. Now, don't worry if it takes you longer to do this. I've done this assignment like 100 times, so it's easier for me. Now, what happened is it came back, but we forgot to set it equal to something, so we lost our date. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, because what happens is when you call this function, whatever you return out of it, comes out and is going to go over here and be uh, put inside of the variable that's on the left side of the equals here. So we go in, we create our nice date, okay, and this string, the string that's in the nice date, not the nice date itself, but that string we're seeing right there, when we step, that string comes out and is set into a variable here. Okay, in other words, this can have a completely different name. All right. So now if I do a go, this is still going to work. When I do a step, the nice date includes our nice date. And then, of course, we can print that here. Okay. Take away the breakpoint. 
go ahead and try it for all three rows. And there we go. We've got nice dates for each row from our file. All right, we don't want to just write out data. We want to read in data and write it out together. So that's what this code does on this converting files web page. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Now what I've got here is I took my uh, file that had my computer date to nice date in it and I just deleted everything except the path. Okay, and you can see here where we're going to open our input file for reading. There's the R. And we've got an output file. I'm going to go ahead and write that into the same folder, the current folder the script is in. And here I'm writing some stuff out and reading some stuff in. And I'm just going to go ahead and take some of this out because it's solving it for a different problem um, and go ahead and run it. Ooh, it's got an error. Okay, well, yeah, because it's trying to write out uh, two strings without properly putting them together. So I could make this more complicated or I can just stick a plus in there. This is going to be our column header. Go ahead and run this. All right, it worked, didn't actually do much. If I go to the folder, there's my output file. Now, you can load these into Excel, but Excel isn't always the best. In this case, it works. I'll show you in a minute, uh, sometimes when it doesn't work as well. I like to use Notepad++. shows me exactly what's happening in the file. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take our line, and first we want to break it up. using the commas, and of course you could write this with the CSV library as well, either when you want to. The date time element is equal to the elements of zero, so the first one. And then we've got our function up here. So I want to call my function, pass in our international date format that's not the friendliest one on the planet, so you're having trouble writing parentheses. And that'll give us back a nice date. And then I'm going to go ahead and write that to my output file. And I'm just going to do it this way for now. Of course, I need to add some inline comments here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just run it. Error, date time string is not... Ah, well, that's interesting. That was a mistake. Let's try it again. Huh. I guess I had the wrong parameter there in my function. Okay, and it's having some problems because we got a blank line. Now notice it went through and processed the date times in our string, but when you hit these kind of problems, you're gonna get an error, and this is the error that the line that the error occurred on. If I click back up here, I can see which line in my main program that it failed on. There's the blank. And what we can see is that here the elements is also blank or an empty string. The line is empty and what happened here is we actually hit the last line and then we came into this loop, we even printed it as a blank line, you can't see it, or an empty string. Okay, and then we read this one, sorry, we read this one and it was blank and we still went ahead and processed it. So I need to go ahead and put an if, line is not equal to an empty string make sure we don't process empty strings and then tab in all my processing. Now, I don't want to tab in this line because we still want to count that one. And now we'll go ahead and run it. And now it looks like everything's working and we can go ahead and, ah, when I clicked on Notepad++, it asked me, do I want to reload it? Yes. Okay, that's not exactly what we wanted, right? So it's got some problems. All right, well, to fix that, what we can do is we can go ahead and write out a new line character right here. And if you notice, we also need a new line at the end of our string here. So let's go ahead and do that. So those were missing. Okay, back in here. Boom, that's looking pretty good. And we probably should call this date. And then you can go ahead and add time. And now we run it. It's looking pretty good. Again, I tend to use Notepad to debug these, but once it's working, you can always open it in Excel and work with them in Excel. And hopefully in ArcGIS, just in ArcGIS, remember to keep your headers. 
uh, to 10 characters or less and only underscores as punctuation or ArcGIS will complain. Um, okay, so that's it for converting files. Now you can go ahead and duplicate this function, make one for time. It pulls the timeout, converts it to a nice time function, and then keep going with other conversions, other functions, and just keep adding them here, one after the other. And of course, uh, you want to add a file header and a bunch of additional documentation. Have fun!